Hello everyone, welcome again. In this Jira Cloud tutorial, we are going to learn how to configure Scrum Board in Jira. Now we have seen about uh, the uh, prod, uh, product backlog, and then sprint backlog, and how we create the sprint, basically when we are creating the sprint backlog. And once you create the sprint backlog, you would have noticed about the boards in Jira, right? So, so for example, if I start with the uh, sample, you know, a Scrum project, which is basically of the classic software project in Jira Cloud, uh, once we create the sprint, this redirects us to, uh, or once we start the sprint, it uh, redirects us to this active sprints uh, board, which is nothing but just the columns that are available in this particular board. Now we'll understand how you can configure this board or say for example you want to create new board in Jira. We'll understand all of that in this particular tutorial. Okay. So in order to configure this board, uh, you just have to go to the three ellipses in the right hand side and you can see the board settings. If you want to create a new board, you can go to create board and you can add the new board depending whether you want to create a scrum board or the kanban board you can choose the board accordingly okay so as of now we are not going to create a new board we'll just understand the existing board that got created what exactly it all uh, means to have a board and how you can configure the board okay so if you see this particular board this board has three columns to do in progress and done and now these columns are basically mapped to the underlying workflow. Now in Jira, you have the workflow, which is nothing but the uh, process that the issues will follow from start to finish. Okay. And when we talk about uh, the process, it's basically defined as the workflow in Jira. And the workflow will have certain statuses that will be mapped to the columns in the board. And these columns that you see to do in progress and done have the mapped statuses which are from the Jira workflow. Now, if I want to show you that detail, so for example, if I'll go to the board setting, let's see how these columns are being mapped. So in the board settings, I'll go to the columns and here you will see that these are the statuses, right? To do in progress and done. Now, these are the statuses that are coming from the workflow, which is being associated with this project, right? So you, you can see simplified workflow or using simplified workflow. And the workflow for this particular project is managed by Jira software. Uh, and we can, you know, add and remove as a project administrator, we can add and remove statuses. Now, this is more of an administration concept, which I'll cover in more detail. Um, when we go into further advanced tutorial but as of now um, you know if I click on this particular workflow uh, we'll see that this is software simplified workflow and if I open the diagram view you will see it has three statuses to do done and in progress and all the issues uh, there are global transition when it says all being mapped to these statuses that means the issue can transition from any other status to this particular status. So this is a brief of the statuses in this particular workflow. I am just showing you so that we can understand how the statuses get mapped to the uh, to your board. Now on this board, you can see now these were the statuses. So to do is mapped to to do a column and in progress is mapped to in, in progress column and done is mapped to done column. Now, if you want to change the name of these column, you can do that. That's not a problem, right? And uh, I can name it as closed. And if I'll go back, I'll see the uh, column has been renamed as closed. Okay, so let me go to board settings again. Now, if you want to say, so for example, if you unmap a status, then um, this particular column will be hidden okay so now on the board that particular column won't be available if there is no status map to that particular column all right so there has to have a status of the workflow map to the column in the uh, on the board 
okay so now to add a new status or new column now because this is a simplified workflow we can add the status and add the column okay now say for example i want to have or add a column which is basically uh, i would say in development all right and the category will be in progress because in development still lies into the category of in progress so i'll just choose that and now so i'll say rather than keeping it as in progress i'll say in review okay so i'll change it to in review and i have added in development so we have something that needs to be done which will be in the to do column then it will move to in development and that in development if you see that as soon as i created a column it automatically created a new status and map to it all right and then i'll simply map this done to this new uh, to the closed column if i want to add a separate stat uh, status i can add by clicking on add status and provide the name okay so i can simply say in qa say for example i want to add a new status in qa i can add a new status in qa and in qa will be available in the unmapped status list because i haven't mapped it to any other column now i have added one more column here in this particular board so let's go back to the board and see how the board looks like now so you have to do in development in review and closed all right now say for example as a software development team i want to have in qa column as well so i'll simply go to board settings and i'll add a column and i'll say uh, in testing okay and then i can simply um, map the status you can see that there is a, a new in testing uh, status already created but i can map this in qa if i want to use the in qa as well and remove uh, this mapping to unmapped all right so now I, I have in testing column as well and I have mapped in QA status to in testing column and now I'll have in testing column as well. So this is about adding the column and mapping the status to the column. Now I'll go to board settings again and the next uh, is important thing is about the general configuration of the board. You will you will be having the board name. You can edit the board name. Who are the administrators of the board? Um, the location basically which project this board belongs to then the filter so you can edit the filter that is being associated with this particular board and filter is nothing but a, a, a sort of a filter to uh, filter out or basically search the uh, issues in that particular criteria so whatever criteria you, def you define in that query that query will filter out the results and will show on the board now um, this board is basically shared so it shares the scrum sample project and then you have the filter query here and other you know permissions basically you can view the permission of this board so this is about the general configuration uh, nothing too complicated here you can just read out and configure the general configuration columns we have already understood swim lanes is something which is basically um, when you create a swim lane it's it's a row that gets created on the board and that row is the row which will be used to group the issues together okay so i can group the issues based on assignee or epics or project or queries so depending on what values i would choose here in the swim lane i can group the queries accordingly on my board so if i say assignees then if i go to my board then you can see this column got created or a row got created unassigned because none of the issues are assigned to anyone at the moment so for example let me change the assignee to somebody here okay and now if i refresh this board now there will be two rows in this particular board so one will be having a person so for example rcv tutorials has one issue assigned and then there there is another row which has three unassigned issues right so this is how we'll configure the swim lanes
now moving next is the quick filter so quick filters are the filters on the board that you see so for example these are the quick filters so if i say only my issues then it will filter the issues that are assigned only to me and the recently updated will update will uh, filter out the issues that are recently updated okay so you can choose multiple filters in the quick filter list let me uncheck all and you can also add new quick filter so you can provide the name of the filter and you can write the jira query language which we'll cover in the later part of the series how you can write the jql queries and use those in the quick filters and then add the description and click add and it will add the filter into your quick filter list and it will uh, it will be available into your jira board at the top of the jira board something like this okay now going back here card colors is another important thing so say for example i want to uh, assign or i want to have the color coding of the card based on the colors okay so for example based on the priority so highest will be red and then accordingly the color will change so now if i go back you can see this little uh, line here the vertical line is the color coding of the card so this will be now because all of these issues are medium priority that's why this is showing as same color so let me change the priority to uh, low and then you will see that the card color um, will change right the color so if you see here the color coding for this card has changed already right because we have chosen the lowest if i change it to medium you'll see the color coding has changed similarly for the highest it will become red okay so that's about the color coding of the card and then the card layout so in the card basically in the card layout what you can do is you can add up to three extra fields on the card which will show on the card okay so for example on the active sprints cards i want to add the assignee on the card okay and then i want to add the description as well okay now let me go back and you can see that the description and the assignee has been added right so it will show you the details or extra details on the card okay then the next option in the board configuration is about the estimation so basically here you can change the estimation statistic based on the story point original time estimate and issue count right so i won't go into much detail about this estimation i'll cover this whole part separately and explain what exactly needs to be configured here when we talk about the estimation bit then in the working days it's pretty simple you can set up your time zone uh, the region etc the the working days etc and then in the issue detail view is another important thing so what exactly issue detail view is if you go back to the board and click on any issue so for example i click on this issue in the right hand side you will get the issue details open and these are the issue details that you can see for example sprint priority and other fields that are displayed on the issue and when we go to the board you will see in the board settings we can update the issue detail now in the issue detail there are many options that are available uh, you can go to the project settings issue layout to basically change the layout and configure the issue details or basically the fields that are available on the issue detail so i'll cover this part as a separate tutorial series as well because this is more of a administrate administration uh, concept so which we'll cover in detail uh, but as of now just understand that in issue detail view you can basically see the fields or add and remove the fields that you want to see on the issue details when you click on the issue then roadmap is in beta uh, basically and you can enable or disable roadmap for your scrum project so if i want to enable it then simply toggle this button and roadmap option will be available in your project so that's about 
the board configuration in the classic scrum project in jira cloud okay so we have understood uh, the board settings basically what all options are available in the board configuration now let's move back to the next gen scrum project and see what all board configurations are available there so i have the next gen scrum uh, project already created and on the on this particular scrum board if you see the board has three different columns and this is a bit different as compared to the classic project right so there is not much flexibility or not much ability that you would uh, find in the next gen project as it is in the classic projects um, so in order to add new columns though in the next gen scrum project you simply have to click on this create column right and say for example i want to create in qa and simply click on this tick and it will add a new column in qa uh, and if i want to change the location of the column say for example to do in progress in qa i simply drag and drop the column and the sequence will be changed so this is how you will add the column in the next gen scrum project now there is no concept of uh, status as such because uh, all of that is handled um, in the in the background in this particular next gen uh, project and if i go to the uh, right hand side three ellipses here you won't get any board configuration option uh, or setting option as such in this particular next gen scrum project um, there is a manage rules option which i'll cover in in few minutes but then in terms of swim lanes in the next gen scrum project you have this group by option so you can group by issues by assignee or epic or basically subtask so you can uh, assign or you can group the issues accordingly so that is equivalent to what we have seen in the uh, swim lanes in the classic project now the other important thing to understand here is basically about the manage rule so on this board you can configure on next gen scrum board you can configure the board rules and what board rules are basically if i click on add rules you can see that there are certain rules that i can set say for example assign an issue to someone okay so if i select this rule and go to next screen uh, say for example once i assign the issue to or once i move the issue to done i want to assign it to my um, you know product owner or whosoever wants to uh, have a look so i can say choose the product owner whosoever is the product owner and add that rule okay so if say for example this particular issue is in qa and this story uh, at the moment let's see whom it is assigned to it is basically unassigned right so let's say i assign it to myself okay so now it is assigned to rcv tutorials and as soon as it gets moved to done it should be reassigned to rcv test right so that's the concept of rules that you can automatically configure rules on the board okay so i'll cover a lot more detail about the rules as well but this is just to give you an intro about the rules and how you can configure rules while configuring the scrum board in the next gen project so that's all about uh, this particular tutorial on uh, how you can configure scrum board in jira in the next gen scrum project or classic scrum project in jira cloud so that's all for this tutorial hope you like it thank you very much for watching